suspicious package has been spotted in a downtown park. First responders must decide which buildings will need to be evacuated and how far away we will need to keep all people from the possible improvised explosive device. This type of information can now be found in the Department of Transportation's 2012 Emergency Response Guidebook. Whether you transport hazardous materials for a living, work in an industrial setting with hazardous substances, or respond to chemical emergencies, the 2012 ERG contains crucial information for the initial phase of a dangerous goods incident. Important new safety precautions and notification procedures should be followed when taking any action at the scene of a hazmat release. All shipments of hazardous materials are required to have a shipping document. The four-digit UN number is listed first with the proper chemical shipping name second. The hazard class must be listed on all shipping papers with subsidiary hazard classes listed in parentheses. A packing group with a Roman numeral 1 can be a major hazard, while a packing group of Roman numeral 3 in general is not as dangerous. The hazard class and packing group provide a snapshot of the dangers associated with the product. The Department of Transportation has organized all dangerous goods into nine hazard classes. Warning labels and placards will have the hazard class number displayed at the bottom, typically with the name of the hazard or the material's UN number. Hazard Class 1 chemicals are explosives. The explosive class is further subdivided into divisions to identify the specific blast or fire hazard. Dynamite is a 1.1D, which is an explosive with a mass explosive hazard. Gases can be flammable, such as propane, non-flammable, such as carbon dioxide, or highly toxic, such as sulfur dioxide. Flammable and combustible liquids have a hazard class of number 3, and flammable solids have three categories, flammable, spontaneously combustible, or water reactive, as represented by the dangerous when wet placard. Oxidizing agents and organic peroxides can be found in hazard class 5. Oxidizers can add oxygen to a fire or be explosive under the wrong conditions. Toxic liquids and infectious substances have hazard classes of 6.1 and 6.2, respectively. Toxic liquids with a black background behind the skull and crossbones indicate that there would be a toxic gas given off by a drum spilling this material. Hazard class 7 would include all radioactive materials, and all acids and alkali materials are listed under the corrosive number 8 label and placards. All other hazardous materials are listed under hazard class 9, miscellaneous. Trucks may also have a dangerous placard, which has a mixed load of chemicals. If a dangerous goods package is to be transported by air, the limited quantity label Y indicates that the package is eligible for transport, but may be used by water transport as well. If a placard can be seen on a leaking tank, a generic response guidebook should be used until additional information can be obtained. If no placards or markings are visible on a rail car or a highway road trailer, the shape of the tanker can also be used to obtain an emergency response guidebook page. For example, a high-pressure tank is involved in an accident. A first responder would turn to guide 117 in the orange section. These types of transports typically carry extremely hazardous gases, which could be flammable or toxic. The potential hazards and public safety information are located on the left side of the ERG, and the emergency response information can be found on the right side of Guidebook 117. Many overseas shipping containers also known as intermodal containers, will have orange panels. The top section will advise the public as to the hazards inside the container, and the lower rectangle will provide the UN number of the material. Millions of miles of gas and petroleum pipelines are buried throughout the U.S. Detailed pipeline identification and response information is located beginning on page 14. Hazardous materials are listed by UN number in the yellow pages, and also alphabetically in the blue pages. The goal is to find the guidebook page for that particular material so that public isolation distances can be identified and initial response activities can begin.
If the material is highlighted in green, the material itself is toxic if inhaled. Or if the material comes in contact with water, the gas that is liberated may also be toxic. For example, if a container larger than 208 liters of dimethyl sulfate has a leak, employees would need to be initially isolated in all directions 200 feet and downwind during the day 3 tenths of a mile. Table 3 lists 6 common toxic gases that have additional parameters to aid first responders. A leaking rail tank car of chlorine would have an initial isolation distance of 1,000 meters, or 3,000 feet, in all directions. If the release were at night with a wind speed of 5 miles per hour, first responders would need to either evacuate or shelter in place for more than 7 miles. If a material is highlighted in green, Table 2 will need to be consulted to determine if the chemical reacts with water to liberate a toxic gas. Firefighters and other first responders will be pleased to find much-needed guidance for potential blevies from propane tanks and isolation distances for suspicious packages or vehicles. A boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion from a 1,500-gallon LPG tank will have a 115-foot fireball radius. Responders should have evacuated all personnel for a minimum of 1,722 feet. And finally, the guidebook lists indicators of a possible chemical, biological, or radiological terrorist event. Thank you for viewing the 2012 Emergency Response Guidebook video. And please, stay safe!